All right, guys, so I'm just sitting in my garage, drinking my coffee, trying to get my mind right going into my workout, and I haven't uploaded a video recently within the past few days because, I, as mentioned previously, I don't have Wi-Fi here. Hey, kitty. There you go, Marcus. That's for you, brother. I don't have Wi-Fi here, so the videos that I've recorded with my actual camera, I'm not going to be able to upload until I get Wi-Fi or until I go to a coffee shop or something like that. But I can still upload videos through my phone's data. So I'll do a little talking video for you guys. So this has been something that's been very hot lately on this whole YouTube fitness scene, which is, it's a joke anyways, guys. YouTube fitness is a joke. And the reason I say this is because it doesn't matter. When, for instance, let me back up. People have been asking me, well, what do you think about partial movements, blah, 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 this and that. It doesn't matter what I think. Who cares what I think? If you're curious about it, then just try it. It goes back to the other videos that I've made about should you wear a belt or not wear a belt, okay? Well, you shouldn't wear a belt until you, uh, you will benefit from a belt. Same thing with straps. Don't wear straps until you benefit from, a, them from the straps. It's common sense, guys. Well, what do you think about this particular movement? And what he says this and he says that. Who cares what either of them say? Try the movement out for yourself. See how it benefits you. If you don't get anything out of it, then don't do it. Okay? Does that mean it's stupid? No. It just doesn't serve your particular cause. The whole reason that I am a big fan of doing behind the back deadlifts and Jefferson deadlifts and Zercher deadlifts and yes, rack pulls and all that stuff is because I was an actual athlete. Okay? A division one Big Ten wrestler, all right? An elite athlete. Who else on YouTube fitness can say that, right? Because they're all arm, what is it? Armchair critiques or whatever, keyboard warriors, whatever it is. It's all theory. This guy says this is the best because of blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter what anyone says. You try it and if it works for you, keep it in your program. Oh, but that's just a, a showboat movement. Who is it a showboat movement for? Or why is it a showboat movement? Because last time I checked in wrestling, okay, you, you're you never going to have a neutral spine. So for instance, behind the back deadlifts, Jefferson deadlifts, where you don't need to have a constant neutral spine, it's going to have great carryover because you can still lift it in more of a specific movement pattern to your particular sport. Now, obviously, you're not going to try to train in the most specificity as, po uh, specificity as possible, like you're not going to wear a weighted vest and have dumbbells in your hands and do sprawls and shots, like that would be stupid. But <clears throat> doing a deadlift that's going to have better carryover to your particular sport, why wouldn't you do that? All right, so that's why I do those odd movements, or that's why I've been doing them in the past, and I'm really good at them, because that's what I've focused on. That's what honestly carried over to my performance. I didn't do those movements in high school and college because it wasn't the norm, right? You do what everyone tells you you should do. And you know what? I never really saw anything have great carryover until I started doing that stuff and I was coaching in college, all right? Wrestling with one of our elite heavyweights, one of the best kids in the country, and I felt strong as an ox. Oh, but how is that possible? Oh, the unconventional lifts, that's why. Because they had great carryover for that particular sport. Was I digging around YouTube looking for random advice on it, if I should do it or not? No, I tried it out and I saw it worked for me. And you know what? I was also a strength and conditioning coach for college athletes. And I incorporated in their programs. And you know what? It carried over to their performance. All right? A national champion we had on our program that I was a strength and conditioning coach for literally said after World Team Trials, <clears throat> or was the US Open, one of those two tournaments, that he felt super strong from the stuff that we were doing recently. Were we doing the, the conventional movements? No. We switched it up. We deviated from the basic cookie cutter football strength and conditioning program that I was going through when I was there. You know what we were doing? Squats. Back squats, front squats, cleans, bench press. That's, and then some like fat bar curls, like the most basic cookie cutter strength and conditioning program you can think of for a wrestling team. That's what we did. But when I took over, we started doing more unconventional stuff and people literally saw better results 
Okay, they felt better from doing those different things. Was it because I was digging around trying to see random YouTube experts, see what they think about them? No, it's because I tried it on myself, it felt good for me, I tried it on other people, it worked well for them, no one got hurt from it, okay? That's the thing too, guys, as long as you're not training like an idiot, as long as you know how to brace, these are all important things. As long as you progressively work up to it and it feels okay for you, then keep stick, then stick with it. You're obviously not gonna jump into a, a maximum effort movement without ever working on it before. You're not gonna go all out, try to hit a one, like a, a superior one rep max, two times your deadlift or whatever it may be. You build up to it. All right, guys, and this is common sense. It's, but this is the thing about YouTube, and this is why I think that it's, it's, it's a bad thing in general. You have a bunch of random people giving advice. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but the thing is it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, honestly. You just try it for yourself. That's it. Have you tried it? No, I don't need to try it. Do I need to jump off a bridge to know it's a bad idea? I've seen that argument. Okay, how are you gonna relate an exercise to jumping off of the bridge? Are you that scared of it that you're going to Honestly, think that if you do this exercise, it's the equivalent of killing yourself. The, I'm sorry, but here's the thing, guys. On top of trying out an exercise and seeing if it feels good to you and seeing if it has any carryover, why don't you join a sport? Let me be more specific. Why don't you join some sort of combat sport? Wrestling, jujitsu, um, Muay Thai, something like that. Something that anyone can do Right? Any, and now in wrestling, you, yeah, maybe you have to be a kid or a college lover, or whatever it may be. But anyone can do jujitsu or um, judo, that type of stuff. Nothing is stopping anyone from trying out one of those. Why don't you join it? All right? It's not any different than joining a higher up gym. See how you feel. Uh, spar against someone your similar caliber. And then start trying to incorporate, incorporate a movement here. And then go back to your sparring, see how you feel. Incorporate this movement, go back to your sparring, see how you feel. That's the ultimate test. Who cares? See, the, the biggest problem with all of this is you always have power lifters comparing movements to the, the, the main three comp competition power lifts. In the real world, who cares about the power lifts? That's the thing. I'm not, of course, conventional deadlift, sumo deadlift, back squat, bench press, it's not like they're bad exercises, but they're not the end all be all. They're actually sub, they're, I'm not gonna say subpar, what's the word I'm thinking, who cares? They're not that great of exercises for actual carryover to a real uh, combat sport, okay? So that's it. That it's so right. That's I don't care about any of this stuff. So people ask me, well, what do I think about this and what do I think about that? I don't care about it, and I don't care enough to say you should do this movement because it's going to do this for you. Who cares? I don't care about it. I don't care what you guys do. I do what I do because it's fun. I enjoy it. At first, I was doing it to see what would carry over the best for an actual sport for wrestling, and it carried over very well, which is why I continuously was working on it, which is why I'm good at those particular movements. Because I have a lot of experience with them. I didn't focus on these basic movements. I did, but whatever, not as much carryover. You get what I'm saying here, guys. I'm just on a rant, basically. <sighs> so try it out for yourself. See how it feels. If you want more experience, like, oh, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't carry over to my power list. Who cares? Why is that the goal unless you're a power lifter? Of course, it's probably not going to have great carry over to the power lift, the main squat and deadlift, because you're neglecting one of the biggest factors of keeping a neutral spine when you're doing like behind the back deadlifts and Jefferson deadlifts. But the main thing is, if you're an athlete, see how it carries over to your actual sport, a real sport. And if you're not an athlete, then just try doing uh, some sort of mixed martial art. It's probably good for you anyways. It'll make you a little tougher. It'll strengthen you in ways that your conventional lifts never would. Because here's something about it. All right, I've seen it so many times. Uh, I'm sure anyone else that's done uh, com uh, combat sport has seen as well. Your bench press, your squat, your deadlift means nothing. I will whoop you even if your lifts are superior to mine, okay? Because that stuff doesn't matter. 
you're not going to be strong with where you need to be strong because whatever, maybe your weakest link in those lists has been holding you back. So now you step on the mat and you're weaker than me in other areas. You get what I'm saying? It's impossible to say that this movement sucks. All right. For instance, I don't know his experience with it, but when Dan from Madtown Fitness was starting, starting up, well, opening his gym and Pete Rubich was back in Madison, Pete was starting, uh, he was trying to get into MMA, right? You guys remember that? And I don't know Pete very well, but I've, I've lifted with him a few times and he was always talking about how fatigued he would feel, how, how tired his arms would get. And Pete, if you watch my channel, I would love to get your feedback on that as well. Do you feel like your 800, 900 pound deadlift carried over extremely well to your MMA? I'm sure it helped in a little bit or in, in, in some sense, like you probably had a really strong back or whatever, but that's about it. Okay. You guys see what I'm saying? Now I'm just going in circles here. So I'm going to sum up, I'm going to wrap up the video with saying that nothing is a bad movement. It's a tool for certain, whatever kind of house you want to build, use that tool to help build the house, right? As cliche as that is, that doesn't even make any sense. I'm done here guys. This is a stupid video, but that's my two cents with it.